Welcome back guys. In the previous set of videos, we learned how to set up Cubase and get started on some basic mixing techniques. So if you've missed those, go back and check them out. But now it's time to move on to some more advanced mixing techniques. And one of those is maybe one of the most misunderstood of all, and that is side chaining. What the heck is side chaining? Let's dive into it. All right, man. So a basic side chain works like this. Whatever track you want to make a change to or do something to is called the target. Whatever track is going to make that change is called the trigger or the input. All right, in our first of three examples, we got a big synth driven EDM style song, sounds like this. All right, so that energy is awesome, it sounds great, except we got a problem. That synth sound on this track is so big that it's covering up the kick drum almost completely towards the end of our little excerpt here. So we need this chainsaw to get out of the way in that part of the song. So our synth sound is gonna be the target and the kick drum is gonna be the trigger. The kick is going to trigger the synth track. So. We're going to come up to here. We're going to put a compressor on our synth track because we need to compress that track and get it out of the way every time the kick drum hits. So to do that, we're going to come up here and we're going to click the activate sidechain button. Not all effects can be sidechained, so check to make sure. If they can, in Cubase, you'll see this little button right up here. In versions of 9.5 and earlier, you activate that button, you come down to the track that you want to use as a trigger, and you create a send and then you choose the sidechain input of the compressor we just inserted on the synthesizer track. Click that. Now, once you activate that send, this track is sending an input over to this compressor. That's versions 9.5 and earlier. Let's get rid of the send for a second. In Cubase version 10 and up, it's a lot simpler. We simply activate our sidechain input. We click the down arrow and then we click on add sidechain input and this just allows us to choose whatever we want the trigger to be from all of our tracks. So we want the kick to be our input or trigger. That's it, that's simple. It automatically creates the send for us over here and now this track is triggering our synth track right here because we've got a compressor on it. That's it, we're ready to set up the compressor for sidechaining. So now we go to the compressor we are gonna choose a fairly high ratio, about five to one. We're gonna leave the attack where it is, the hold where it is. We're gonna leave the release as a super fast release. We're gonna leave the analysis button where it is. The makeup is gonna be manual at zero. We're not gonna add any gain or subtract any gain. And we're gonna start at the very top here. We're gonna play back the track. We're gonna drop the slider. All right, so you can hear that exaggerated kind of dance EDM vibe as the compressors takes it down. We don't want quite that much. If we back this off just a hair, it's just enough to duck that synth out of the way while the kick is coming in. We don't want that super exaggerated, take the entire mix down vibe or that filtered vibe. We're just trying to get the kick to trigger that synth so the synth gets out of the way every time that kick hits. So we don't need a ton of compression. So as you can hear in our first example, setting this fairly mildly is enough just to trigger that synth to duck out of the way every time the kick drum hits. Up next in example two, we got a dense rock mix to work with. We've got all of our tracks on the left-hand side and we got all of our buses on the right-hand side. This time, instead of using the tracks section of our mix for our trigger and our target, we're gonna use the buses instead. So let's take a listen to what we have so far and listen specifically to the tom fill. All 
All right, so this sounds great, and it's a really dynamic mix. There's a lot of energy here. The guitars punch you in the face. We don't want to change any of that about the mix. It sounds great just the way it is, but the tom fill is getting lost, especially towards the end of the tom fill. Those lower toms are kind of like getting covered up completely, and that's because there's a ton of crap going on at the same time. We got a huge guitar wash happening at that same time and a lot of other stuff. So what we want to change is the guitar bus itself. That's going to be our target. And what's going to make that change happen, again, is going to be our Tom's bus. That's going to be the trigger. So we're going to go up to our guitar's bus. We're going to choose a compressor. We're going to choose a fairly high ratio, not a lot, about four to one. We don't want a ton of change here. We're going to keep the attack fairly fast. We're going to keep the release fairly smooth at about 140. We want to try to get the release of the compressor to be in time with the song. We're going to keep the analysis button where it is. We're going to take it out of auto mode. We don't want to add or subtract volume. We want to keep everything the same. We just want to duck the guitars out of the way of the tom fill, just enough to hear those toms poke through the mix a little bit. We're going to take the slider all the way up. We're going to go up to our activate sidechain button, and that's going to turn on the sidechain feature. We're going to hit the drop down box. We're going to come down to our add sidechain input, and we are going to navigate all the way down to the toms bus. Now the toms bus is set up as the trigger. So the toms are gonna make the guitars duck out of the way just enough to hear that fill. So let's hear it without it first. All right, so we could turn up or down the toms and all that stuff if we want to, but that's gonna affect the balance of the mix and all the stuff that's downstream from the toms. For example, the drums bus that it feeds into and eventually our stereo bus. We're already hitting the limiters and the compressors pretty hard. We don't want to change that relationship at all. We just want to duck it out of the way for a second. So to do that, let's drop the slider until we hear a really exaggerated change. All right, so you can hear that that takes way too much of the guitar bus down when those toms come in. But you get the idea, it's ducking it out of the way. We're gonna speed the release up a little bit so that compressor lets go of the guitar's bus a little faster. And then we're gonna bring it back up to a level that makes sense. So we're gonna start around between zero and then start dropping it until we hear an effective change. Let's try a little more. All right, and then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to automate this effect. In other words, we're going to make it only turn on when we absolutely need it. We don't want it sitting there riding in the background, and every time a tom fill comes up, it takes the guitar bus down with it. We just want it to come in, do its job, and then get out of the way. In our third and last example, we got a rap song with a big sub that needs some control. In this final example, we're going to kind of dive deep in this. Instead of using the sidechain feature just to duck an entire track, we're going to use the sidechain feature just to remove a specific frequency of the target track. All right, so we got a rap example here. It's got a huge beats section with a lot of low end. And in addition, we got a sub frequency going on as well. And the whole thing kind of sounds like this for the hooks. You ain't got what you want. All right, so we got beat sections, we got sub going on, there's a lot of stuff going on here. That huge bottom end just in that kind of 808 style kick, it's a really big fat kick on the bottom end. The sub section by itself sounds like this. All right, so those two are competing together causing too much sub information when they both play simultaneously. So we got to take some low end out of the 808 style beats track, but only when the sub hits. When it stops playing, we got to put it back. Our target is going to be the beats section and our trigger is going to be the sub. So every time that sub hits, it's going to trigger the compressor that we're going to put on the beats section. But instead of ducking the entire beat, it's just going to take a specific frequency out of it. So how we're going to do that is we are going to use a multiband compressor, which is basically four compressors stuck into one. But we only want to take the low end frequency out of the beats track. And so we are going to choose Steinberg's multiband compressor. It's got four bands. 
that we can use, we're only going to use the low end band. It's also got this little drop down panel here, and this is going to tell our side chain what to look for, what frequencies to look for. It can look for four different bands of frequencies. We only want it looking for the lowest possible frequencies because our subtone is really way down there. It's like 50 Hertz. So instead of this being up here, into the Ks or even the high Hertz. We're gonna drop it all the way down to 25. This frequency knob right here tells the input detector of our side chain how low to look before it does something. We want it to look all the way down to 25 Hertz because that sub frequency is super low. We're gonna start out with a fairly moderate threshold and ratio setting. We want the compressor to do a little bit of work here and our bands up here are gonna determine the frequency range that each compressor module is gonna reduce. So we wanna set these bands so that the lowest one doesn't go much above 100 Hertz because this is gonna determine the frequency that we're gonna be removing from the beats section. So let's solo just the beats and subsections by themselves and let's hear what it sounds like. And then when that sub stops triggering, this guy over here, we're no longer taking down any low frequencies. We got that big fat beat back again. So every time that sub note triggers, it takes a little bit of the low end off our target track over here, which is our beats track. But only then, when the sub note stops triggering, then it goes back to its regular self. Let's play it again and listen to the difference. Here's the sub note triggering the low end cut. Then the sub stops and the frequencies for our beat section comes back up to normal. So now our beat section is back to having that big fat bottom end kick and everything sounds great again. This is a subtle thing, but it's a powerful tool and can make a gigantic difference when you get down to the finished mix. This kind of multiband side chaining technique is really powerful for cleaning up problems in a mix and squeezing every ounce of dynamic range out of your mixes. All right, so there were three examples of side chaining in the real world. I hope you learned something from it. If you did, please hit the subscribe button and we'll see you guys in the next video.